Today, I'm painting humans from the far future. But no, it's not what you're thinking. This isn't Warhammer. This is ISS Vanguard. Yes, it's a board game. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I am also very enthusiastic about board games as well as war games. And today I need just one day break from Warhammer because there's so many Tyranids to do and I just can't do them nonstop. So today I'm gonna to be taking a little break and painting some figures from my board game, ISS Vanguard. I'm a really big fan of this one because I just love, love games that have base management, cooperative gameplay, drafting, things like that. And ISS Vanguard has that, plus a really cool sci-fi adventure theme. And I also love sci-fi and adventure. <laughs> we're about halfway through this campaign and we're loving it so far. And I thought I could finally dip my toes into painting minis from a board game instead of just Warhammer. But we're not here to talk about board games or their mechanics. Unless you want to, tell me later. We're here to paint miniatures. So we're gonna start now with these two. They are the security people that do mainly security stuff when going out and exploring other planets. So they've got big heavy armor and a lot of utility to help stop aliens and monsters and the like. And I also really wanted to touch up on my non-metallic metals, which I think could work well on these really large fully armored units. I could practice non-metallic metal, I can paint some of my minis for board games, and I can take a break. It'll all be a good fun day. Now the goal is to get both of these done in just one day. So in three to four hours, which is generally about max what I can do in a day. I did a little bit of research on how to paint board game minis because I know they're not, you don't assemble them and the plastic feels and looks a little different. And we gotta give them apparently a little bath first to get rid of any sort of, I think it's the molding residue that they say gets on these when they press mold them. I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but they say to give them a bath in soap and water and give them a little brush. So I'm gonna do that, let's go. So while I wait for them to dry, I'm gonna look up some ways that they've painted them because honestly, there's so many little ridges on these guys. I don't know what colors things need to be. It all seems like a jumbled mess in my head. It looks like they have some official art. Okay, it's mostly iron. And then they have a glow on their helmets and glow on their guns and his giant chainsaw thing. I don't even know what that is. It looks like a gun, but it also looks like a chainsaw. Glowing chainsaw. Another thing I have to think about is that I want to do this in a non-metallic metal format. And doing that, a lot of the tutorials I've seen have given you a beginner tutorial on a very smooth metal surface because obviously that's the easiest way to teach someone how it works. You just got a smooth piece of metal and you show them where the light needs to hit. And I probably should have started with something like that, but that's not as cool. I think the plan is, if you can see the photo, is I'm going to have to make a lot of the edges of it seem to shine. And then like a lot of the tutorials do have an under glow. So let's try it. Let's see how it works out. If I really, really hate it, I can just go over it with true metallics, but we're gonna really try not to do that in a decent amount of time. So let's start painting.
Okay, so I think, I think I finished the metal portion of the guy. Now, it's only been about an hour and I was able to put the black on, base coat the blue undertone of the metal and then finish doing all the highlighting on one of them, which I think is really, really good time. So, cause I don't wanna work too long on this. So I don't know, does this read as metal? I think on camera, it reads a little bit more like as I was looking at it while putting it in front. It's really hard to tell. I'll be honest, like when I'm looking straight at it, I see all of my brush strokes and I know how I got there. So it's like, I don't see my eye being tricked that it's metal yet. I need to like show someone and be like, hey, is this metal? Because I'm looking at it so close, I really can't tell at all. But I think I'm making great time. So hopefully I'll finish the girl in another, let's say half an hour. And then I think for the rest of it, I'm going to either just like speed or contrast paint it because the point of this was really to do the metal because they're mostly wearing metal armor. So if you can nail that, or if I can nail that, then I think the rest of it just not needing super, super, attention to detail should make it definitely board game ready and to be able to put it on there and have really cool looking minis. So I'm going to keep going and see where they both land after I finish all the middle parts. This past hour has been an emotional roller coaster. I thought, you know, this needed to be more steel. So I threw in some gray. The gray was looking really weird since I already had so much blue on. And then I was like, okay, I'll work on the girl. I started working on the girl and everything, the lights that I was doing didn't make any sense. It didn't look like metal at all compared to the guy. And then I was like, you know what, let me just, start putting on some speed paint so that I can get ready for tonight so that it's all dry. And then for some reason, the orange, what's it called? It's called this nuclear sunrise. Looks so weird on the palette and then on my figures, it looked grainy. So then I was getting even more frustrated. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start from roughly square one with how I was doing the metal because even though this is supposed to be sci-fi, the iron look was just, it was looking better. I guess I watched more tutorials on how to do iron instead of steel. So I just repainted it all again and I spent, I spent so much time just trying to figure out how to make it look right. In the end, I think I'm gonna call it here on the metal. If I do anything more, it's just, I think going to, make it worse and worse and worse. Here she is. It looks metal enough. I think once I start painting the rest of the stuff, it'll look a little better. I don't know. <laughs> Non-metallic metals are hard, especially when you're doing surfaces that have a lot of ridges. It, it was tough to get right. We'll see how it goes. I'm not happy with it right now, but that's the whole point of this, right? We're learning and hopefully next time it'll look better. Probably should have done one that had smoother surfaces, but oh well, I'll see you guys this afternoon.
they're done. I think, I'll be honest, this one, I'm not happy with it. I don't think it reads as metal, maybe an iron if you squint, but I'm not seeing it. I don't know what it is. It felt like everything that I did, every technique that I thought I knew and at least had a decent mastery of just fell on the wayside. I need to brush up on so many things. Maybe I've been doing so much of the same type of painting like with all the Tyranids that I just forgot how to do so many other basic things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like her robes, I feel like I completely forgot how robes work. I didn't want to dry brush because I didn't want to ruin the metal, the metal parts. And it looks okay to me. I feel like the only thing that saved it was the airbrushing, the cool glow, so that at least you look at that and you don't look at everything else. Like even their, their bases, just the rocks looks okay at best. I don't know what I could have done better. I guess research how capes work again. That would have been probably a good idea. I was mainly making this a non-metallic metal video, but her cape is just as big. And now that I'm seeing how the robes went on and I didn't like how they looked, it's just really bothering me. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> It's weird to talk about. I'm trying to think of what I think maybe I did better or not. Um, it was definitely good practice on non-metallic metals. I think I was getting somewhere with it. It's just hard to tell what I could do to change it. I think it must have been where I was putting the highlights. And then like the low light seems so dark to me that you can't, you can't even tell that there's any paint on it almost. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think would have been a good improvement or something that I should have focused on to make it a little better. I am really glad that I got them painted. They're the first, you know, board game minis that I've ever done and a painted mini always looks better than an unpainted one. I just think I need more practice. It's hard. And I think it's officially time to invest in some paintbrushes that don't completely fray. They were so difficult to work with, with smaller details, like it was driving me in sane. Thank you for joining me. I hope you got a little something out of this. I would love to keep painting more board game minis in the future, so if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, and until next time, keep painting. I'll see you then. Bye!